everyone. G'day. Welcome. How you going? Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Uh, some people have noticed, yes, I changed the name of my channel. Um, yeah, just something different. So, uh, I'm going to share uh, Gosford Glyphs here. I don't know if many people have heard about them. There's something about it. So, uh, a bit further in, I will show you what the translation to these glyphs actually say. So, stay tuned. Alright, the Gosford glyphs, also known as Carry On Hieroglyphs, are a group of approximately 300 Egyptian hieroglyphs located in Kairong, New South Wales, Australia. They are found in an area known for its Aboriginal petroglyphs. It's just between Gosford and Woi Woi in the Brisbane Water National Park. The glyphs have been since dismissed as hoax by authorities and academics after their discovery in the 1970s, but there are still attempts to prove the belief that they were carved by the ancient Egypts about 4,500 years ago. Um, they were actually discovered in the early 1900s. Um, yeah, I've seen documents where it says they were discovered in the 1920s. Nonetheless, the site is a large collection of Egyptian hieroglyphs outside of Egypt and Sudan. While rumours of Egyptian glyphs have existed since the 1920s, they were first officially recognised by the National Parks and Wildlife Service in 1993. The description, the glyphs are carved into two parallel sandstone walls about 15 metres, 49 feet long, 3 metres, 10 feet high. The glyphs range between 5 centimetres, 2 inches to 60 centimetres, 24 inches in length and 1 centimetre, 0.4 of an inch to 2.5 centimetres, 1 centimetre in depth. They are a primitive prototype of Old Egyptian and Middle Egyptian glyphs and tell their meaning by their illustrated illustration alone. The inscriptions on the east wall are carved deeper than those on the west, which are more eroded due to the pre ocean winds. The glyphs on both walls of the cliff feature around 26 paragraphs, and the walls have dark red colour, possibly caused by the use of red ochre, iron oxide. They depict boats, chickens, dogs, owls, sick men, dogs' bones, as well as two cartouches. That appear to be the names of the kings, one of them Khufu, the second king of the fourth dynasty, 2637 to 2614 BC, and the other uncertain. The names are given the same personal name and throne name. There is also a carving of the ancient god Anubis. According to Queensland Egyptologist Ray Johnson, who claimed to have done the transcription of the Chiron glyphs, the carvings marked the burial site of Lord Neferturu, sorry for saying this wrong, a member of the Egyptian royal family who had died from a snake bite while leading a journey with his brother Neferturu. I can't say that, I apologise. really do apologise, sorry. Their carvings were first formally re reported in 1975 by Alan Dash, a local surveyor who had been visiting the area for seven years. Dash continued to visit for five years up until their discovery. The site of the glyphs were engulfed with sand and rocks and have overgrown vegetation. In 1983, David Lambert, then a rock art conservator for the National Parks and Wildlife, found some clean-out hieroglyphs which he estimated to be less than 12 months old. False citation. Uh -huh. From the mid-1990s, the site started to receive more public attention. Since then, the hieroglyphs have been claimed by amateur Egyptologists to be authentic script created by ancient Egyptolo Egyptians about 4,500 years ago, who sailed to Australia and they graved their story into the stones after becoming shipwrecked. Scholar and Professor Octing Okinga, I can't say that, sorry, has said there are many reasons why they are not accepted as genuine hieroglyphs. First of all, first of all, the way they are cut 
is not the way ancient Egypt's rocks inscriptions are produced. They are very disorganized. There's also a problem with the actual shapes of the signs that are used. There is no way people would have been inscribing texts from the time of the cheapos to the signs that were invented until 2,500 years later. He suggested the glyphs might have been made in the 1920s by Australian soldiers when there was a general interest in the ancient Egypt after the uncovering of the tomb tech Tutankhamen at the time. The soldiers who had served in the Sultanate of Egypt from the mid-1910s to early 20s cited an example for shapes in the form of the Sphinx and a pyramid known to have been made by a returning soldier. Australian Professor of Egyptology, this guy, has also stated that they're not authentic and that they were constructed in the early 1980s considering that the hieroglyphs within the same panels were of widely different periods and some were carved backwards. Other theories from the creation include high school students who copied them from their textbooks in the 1970s and a Yugoslavian immigrant who was interested in Egyptology who etched them in the early 1980s. Geologists have stated that the sandstone in which the hieroglyphs are carved erodes quickly and nearby 250-year-old Aboriginal petroglyphs um, Bulgandari Aboriginal site shows considerably more erosion. Conversely, Dr. Hans Dieter von Snuff, who graduated from the University of Newcastle with a PhD, claims the Australian was a discovery of the Third Dynasty about 5,000 years ago. The Egyptians landed at Cape York Peninsula and moved south. Indigenous historian Stephen Strong also believes the glyphs authentically say they, the Egyptians, came here 5,000 years ago as part of a sacred coil. They wanted to exchange knowledge with the Aborigines, but they earned a lot more than they bought. According to Strong, their interaction continued until the 17th century when the Egyptians travellers were caught stealing sacred stones from the desert and thus the Aborigines tracked them all the way to Belmore Beach in Sydney and killed them. See, a lot of the Aboriginal history has been wiped out because of the stolen generation and what happened when they first came here. They were so brutal, even until the 70s, they were still killing the Aboriginals. So they were just so horrible. So stay tuned, I'm going to um, show you these glyphs and I'm going to translate what these glyphs are. Recognition, although they were widely debunked, the National Library of Australia in Canberra and the British Museum in London contain many files and books that have been reports of the glyphs. Furthermore, they have been examined by biblical archaeologist Alan Roberts and recognised by the General Director of the Cairo Museum and as well as the former Egyptian Ministries of Antiquities, Dr. Zaha Hawass. I think that they've sort of made a throw-off story to it. I really do. They don't want you looking into this. This is where you, like, walk in. I think these are the walls of which it's on, yeah. And they're not going to be perfect if they're done by someone that's shipwrecked. <laughs> they don't have people there doing it for them. And, of course, it might be backwards because they used to project the images. So if they used a projector to do it in the past, uh, you know, uh, it can make sense as to why. So the Egyptian god Anubis, the largest carving of the site, uh, this doesn't show many photos of it, really. They don't want people looking in it. And when I look at uh, hieroglyphs, I look at today's emojis. Uh, today's emojis are a similar form and, and way we use to communicate with people all over the globe, or all over the world, you know what I mean. Muhammad Imbrun and Yusuf Abdel Hakim Awan noted how the scribes who created the ancient symbols in Australia accurately used several ancient hieroglyphs and geometrical variations which, surprisingly, were not even documented in Egyptian hieroglyph texts until 2012. The translated Gulfwood glyphs state the following. The Egyptian hieroglyphs on the east wall says, 1. For His Highness, the Prince, from this wretched plain in this land, where we were carried by ship, engraved for the crown of the lower Egypt, according to God's word. 2. 
My fellow Egyptians called out from this place in a strange land for the god Stuf Stuti. I'm not sure what it is, sorry. I, Nefer, son of Kefer, king of Upper and Lower Egypt, beloved by Pata, has brought the gods. Three, the prince was kind and benevolent, benevolent follower of the sun god Ra. Four, for two seasons, eight months, he directed us eastward, weary but strong to the end. Always praying, joyfully, and smiting insects. He, the servant of God, said God created the insects to protect his people. Five, I myself, hardened, have gone around hills and deserts, in wind and rain, with no lakes at hand, blessed by the falling nights when I hide completely out of reach. Six, in our last camp, I cooked fowl on hand and bought rain, but hurt my back carrying the golden falcon standard, crossing hills, desert, and pools of water along the way. Seven, plants are withering, land is dying. Is this our lot from the highest god of the sacred myrrh? Eight, the sun is pouring down upon our back, O oh, mighty Kephra. This is not what the oracle has said. Our hearts, hearts are overturned but not broken. Nine, this regal person came from the temple of God in Pene, Egypt. He came from the house of God. He was the son of king of Upper and Lower Egypt. Ten, he who died before is here laid to rest. May he have eternal life everlasting. Sorry, may he have life everlasting. 11. He is never again to stand beside the waters of the sacred myrrh. Then clasp him, my brother's spirit, to thy side, O father of the earth. The Egyptian hieroglyphs on the west will say, 12. The snake bit twice. We, followers of the di divine king, Khufu, Mighty one of the lower Egypt, lord of the two Andes, we shall not all return. However, we have to continue. We cannot look back. 13. All creeks and riverbeds are dry, and we are dismayed. Our boats are tied up with rope. Death was caused by snake. 14. We gave egg yolk from the medicine chest and prayed to Anum, the hidden one, for he was struck twice. 15. It was a hard time for all of us, weeping over the dead body and keeping to the protocol. 16. Seated all aside, our men watched the funeral with concern and deep love. How the mummified body was buried in the red earth section. 17. Then we recovered ourselves. 18. We wailed in the side entrance to the chamber with stones from all around. Oh, sorry. So I read that again. 18. We walled in the side entrance to the chamber with stones from all around. The chamber was aligned with the western heavens. 19. I counted and impounded the daggers of our men. 20. The three doors of eternity were connected to the rear end of the royal tomb and sealed in. The source of the translation is the burial site of Lord by Dr. J. Um, it just seems like the, there's a big sort of throw off in letting people um, hear the, what is transcribed. I've been looking for a long time to find what's transcribed and I only just found it now. So I wanted to share it. But it seems like there's a lot of uh, debunking going on lately with stories that are really old that are the truth, that are made up, now being, having stories made up to cover them. This is the site of where it is. I wouldn't be surprised if it's um, 
mountain like it says and they've sealed it up. Going there. Yeah, I just thought I'd share that one. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I think it's plausible. Totally plausible. Alright, we're around the world. Thanks for watching.